B&B. Right, this prediction could go horribly wrong and there's a couple of reasons for this. Number, but the single biggest reason fundamentally is uh, Binance and the SEC are sort of locked in a battle and Binance are building a few enemies fundamentally around, um, around the world at the moment. Um, you know, nation governments, they are not uh, endearing themselves to. And while I do think BNB should rock it up in price, this could, this could go wrong, so I'll explain why in this video. Uh, before I get into any of it though, guys, if you're new to the channel, uh, these are the first 26 coins that I did videos about on the channel. In the videos I was showing everyone that was buying up all of these coins because I expect them to just rock it up in price. Uh, you can see what these coins were worth when I released my videos and you can see the highs that all these coins hit. Um, a little less than a year and a half on which is kind of where we're at in the market right now. In a year and a half's time, we're gonna, the market's gonna be red hot. Uh, and if you put in $100 into each of these coins, that's 26 coins, $2,600 investment, sell, holding them for less than a year and a half, sell it and then selling them, your profit from a $2,600 investment would have been over 123 grand. You can see, you know, it's just adding up all of these numbers, all these profits. Um, now I sold all of these. I have been buying up new cryptos since the market crashed. I continue to do so. Anytime I find a coin that I really like, I jump onto my website, which is copymycrypto.com, and I tell my members all about the coin. And what I will do is I will tell them what the coin is that I'm looking at and going to buy, uh, what kind of gains I think it can have, why as well, um, and what percentage of my money I'm putting in. And then the members can literally copy along. What this does is remove the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours worth of work required to find the winners in this market. So if you're looking, if you're in crypto, you didn't make the profits in the last bull cycle, our members did. And if you want to see what those profits are, go to copymycrypto.com. You'll be able to see what the members made. You'll be able to see the things I've said in the past and what ended up happening, all of its public record, so you can verify it all. And if you like what you see and you like the idea of making the profits without doing any work, that is what copymycrypto.com is. So pause the vid now, go read the entire site and see if it's something you want to try. Right, BNB. So there's a lot to sort of deconstruct with BNB. Um, honestly, I'm probably gonna have to pause the video to just get other stuff up. So BNB is the token that fuels the Binance um, exchange. So BNB is an exchange token. They then launched um, the Binance Smart Chain. So the Binance Network uh, includes obviously the Binance Exchange, the Binance uh, Chain, the Binance Smart Chain, as well as the Academy, the Trust Wallet, and the research projects uh, that they have. And <clears throat> the founders of BNB were obviously at CZ, is the founder of CEO and uh, founder and CEO of Binance. Um, and he joined Bloomberg as head of trade book futures development. He spent four years with the company and later joined Fusion Systems as a partner. He was actively involved in blockchain tech since 2013. He, he became head of development of blockchain. Uh, and in 2015, he founded uh, BG Tech. Uh, and in 2017, he officially launched Binance and became the CEO and has been there ever since. Um, also, he, he, he is a... Uh, Co-founder and chief marketing officer at Binance, who started a career as a TV anchor, presenter on China Travel TV. Um, later, Yi co-founded OKCoin, which was the largest fiat to crypto exchange in China. Uh, and in 2017, joined uh, forces with CZ to create Binance. Now, BNB is the token that's going to fuel, that fuels everything to do with Binance, whether that's the Binance Smart Chain, whether that's the Binance Exchange. You get discounts if you trade with BNB. Um, BNB, or by holding BNB, you're also going to be able to utilize our Binance for all the stuff like the launch pools, the launch pads. Um, and then they launched the Binance Smart Chain. Now, um, there's been a number of different attempt, well, hacks, uh, such as a 200 million exploit Pancake Bunny and several hacks of Queen Finance. Uh, despite these hacks, users return to Binance because its fees are ridiculously low. And Binance Smart Chain is, let's be honest, the go-to place 
to build and create a meme coin. Um, and Jesus Christ, in the last bull cycle, we saw uh, an emergence of just meme coins going wild. Um, so in reality, look, that's going to be the place to go again. So if we're going to see meme coins explode in the next bull cycle, and no doubt we will we'll see two or three or four or five that just go absolutely crazy, they're going to be on Binance Smart Chain. They always are. Um, as you can see, it's backed by people like Alameda, um, Multicoin Capital, uh, Celsius, it, you know, had a huge holding in it as well. It's worth noting the, this is by the SEC alleged to be a security, and this is where the issues come in. Before I get to the actual issues, you know, what you can see on BNB is an ecosystem that's only really second to like Chainlink and Ethereum. Um, the dApps across uh, BNB now are enormous. Um, you know, you've got XCAD, which, you know, is very popular. Uh, watch to earn model that's built upon that. You've got linear finance, which is a nice DeFi project. You've got um, a few different interesting sort of um, tokens like uh, Wombat and uh, Grape Swap and Roseon. Um, I mean, this is a massively large, large ecosystem. Um, and like I said, it's the go-to place for meme coins. If you want the best, if you want meme coins that are not going to cost you much in terms of transaction fees, which obviously isn't still a, and will remain an issue on Ethereum, you would go to BNB. Developers that want to build a meme coin that might take off and rock it up a thousand percent or a thousand times more like um, go to BNB. And of course they go to BNB. They keep adding to the ecosystem as well. They've got, you know, a huge fund for developer grants. Um, these, you know, you've got gas grants, you've got builder grants, you've got MB, uh, the MVB Accelerates program, you've got Kickstart. All of these different programs allow builders the opportunity to get started. You need a bit of capital behind you to get started. Um, and BNB has an enormous sort of war chest for really growing this. You know, as an example, they've introduced B uh, BNB Greenfield is a new project that's landing on the BNB chain. Not that new now, obviously, it's kind of an eight month old thing, but uh, very, very interesting because uh, this is trying to create a new structure uh, and economic um, infrastructure for Web3. Uh, the ownership usage and monetization of data is now possible. Uh, via BNB Greenfield. Now, this is a very much a go-to thing for a, a number of different projects. Data is big, big money for obvious reasons. Uh, and I've gone through this a number of times, but you look at your Google, your Facebook, your, all, all of the biggest com tech companies in the world, most of their money is made by data. Data is, uh, is while it's the least sexy topic, it's the most valuable in terms of profit margin um, so we're seeing a lot of different crypto projects that are, are sort of shifting towards data ownership or data usage or data monetization so again another project that could do very very well on bnb um, but we're going to look at the downsides so um binance is actually abandoning most of europe now um crypto firms only need regulatory approval in one eu nation under new rules to serve uh, all 27 in the single market, but more, some states are more prepared to implement micro regulations than others. Micro regulations, if you're unfamiliar, is um, not just the requirement for removal of privacy coins, which is, in my eyes, a very, very big problem, um, but also that um, even if there's a thousand dollar transaction from like an individual, that has to be reported. So what the micro regulations effectively have done within the EU is ensure that the administration work and costs for uh, centralized exchanges has probably 50 X, you know, for some reason it's required that uh, a centralized exchange must report um, certain amounts of like certain amounts of financial transactions. If it breaks, I, I believe it was $1,000, but I know they made adaptations to the micro bill a few times. 
but I believe it was a thousand dollars, which to me is mad. Not a single bank in the world has to report that kind of transaction. So why the hell a crypto exchange does is beyond me. And what it does end up ensuring is that most of these centralized exchanges are going to get administration costs through the roof. You're going to have to hire additional teams because you've got to start you know, sending off information about transactions. Think how many transactions on a given day are above $1,000 within the crypto market. Absolutely staggering. So, and they've pissed off a lot of Europe. Part of that is because they genuinely just said, no, we're not, we're not buying um, privacy coins. Um, and as a result, you know, they're talking, they've effectively looked at closing trading in a few different places. Uh, they have interestingly banned some privacy coins. Uh, they did ban, ban privacy coins in Belgium. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a very weird one. They've, and they've pissed off the EU without question. Um, so I don't really know how uh, Binance are going to try and deal with this issue. Then you've got the additional problem of um, the SEC filing a bunch of charges against not only Binance, but the founder CZ. Um, this causes, again, a number of different issues. Uh, the, the, the charges relate to um, not only selling of unregistered securities, you know, they're always going to go hard on that. They've also uh, made allegations about the way in which Binance have done their business. You know, there's been effectively allegations about the fact that um, Binance made suggestions of using VPNs to, to get around the sort of US laws. Um, it's, it's a, yeah, they are failing to restrict US investors. Um, so an elaborate scheme to evade US uh, the, the complaint ledgers that in reality sees a substantial involvement that control the US entity the behind the scenes. Uh, sees direct Binance to allow and conceal many high value US customers continue to, uh, to access Binance. Yeah, so again, it's just um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very odd. So this is the thing is, right, fundamentally BNB is the biggest exchange in the world. It's the number one. There's no question. Um, it did one of the biggest runs of a bull cycle. I mean, when you realize it went from like when it launched like 10 cents, um, even at hell, like in the bear cycle, you know, in sort of December, November, it was knocking around six bucks and it hit highs of like $690. Uh, you know, it's a solid hundred X. It's not the best obviously, but it's damn bloody good. No one's going to complain about hundred X. Um, the question is, is what can do in the next bull cycle? It has, has only really been through one bull cycle. Um, so Circuit Link supplies 153 million. I do honestly see this hitting a thousand dollars. Why wouldn't it have a market cap of 153 billion dollars? I know that's insane amounts of money, but also think about the amount of volume that goes through Binance on any given day. Think about the amount of uh, projects that go through the Binance smart chain. This is the single biggest project when you encompass the centralized exchange and everything else. It, you can make the argument it's bigger than Ethereum. Um, now, it should hit $1,000, really should. It should be one of the biggest market caps comfortably. The issue here is going to be um, price suppression. If the EU, if they, if they remove all trading ability within the EU, that's a problem. A lot of volume drops. Um, yes, people can still trade in the EU on Binance Smart Chain but you'd lose the centralized exchange where a lot of volume throws through, flows through. The second issue you've got is obviously the SEC. If the SEC um, try and force a ban on uh, BNB or even just a huge uh, legal uh, lawsuit that CZ fights, which is, I can't imagine he's just going to pay off. I think he's going to fight that. Um, we could see a similar issue that Ripple had. The XRP had, where the price just couldn't really rally. And while I do think this should hit a thousand dollars a coin, which is, again is only five X, but if these lawsuits take place, if there's a 
if all the volume leaves the EU markets, it might not do that. It really might not. A lot of people are taking short positions on BNB right now for obvious reasons. There's a lot of concern in and around that SEC issue and the EU issue. Um, I personally, I still think it should hit a thousand dollars, but if lawsuits all occur, you know, in the same sort of time frame, then they're going to be fighting so many legal battles. I think people will just be bearish on the coin in general. Maybe not the exchange, but possibly. Um, so while I do think it should do that, the external variables here of the SEC, of the EU government, could be massively problematic. Um, so I'm hesitant to say $1,000. I'm still going to, but yeah, there could be issues here. So it's one of those. I don't think, I think there are a lot more safe trades uh, or safe investments in the crypto space that will give you better returns than Binance and that have less external risk. Um, so it's not one I would necessarily recommend uh, at all, but it's worth being aware of if you if you are a holder of BNB, that, you know, the, those external variables could be massive. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think I'm underestimating it? Do you think it could do $2,000 or $5,000 a coin? Let me know in the comments down below. If you are a BNB holder, how do you feel about the EU stuff? How do you feel about the SEC stuff? I mean, the SEC stuff's kind of, they go after everyone. But when you, if you're going after the biggest, you've got to hit. So they've got, if they're going after BNB, if they're going after Binance, they've got to get that right. Because uh, if Gary Gensler loses that, SEC and him look like mugs. So it's so if they're gonna, they can't, they can't miss with that lawsuit. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, guys, if you just want to take the work out of your crypto investing, if you want to make the same profits I do, but just do no work whatsoever, that's what CopyMyCrypto.com is. It's where I do all the work. I dive into the markets every day, and when I find coins that are winners, I get in on them. I tell the members all about them. I tell them what kind of pro what coin I'm looking at, what profits I think I can make off of it, what percentage of my money I'm putting in, and they can copy along. CopyMyCrypto.com is where I remove literally all the work for the members, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours um, that frankly people don't have time for because everyone's too busy working these days. Yeah, cost of living crisis and all that. But the profits in crypto are staggering and in the next bull cycle they're gonna be again. If you want to make the same profits as me, like I said, go to copymycrypto.com, read through the site, see if it's something that you want to try. And if it is wicked, I'll see you there. If it isn't, no worries. Uh, but at the very least, go check it out because you want to see what the members have made since joining. And that's it from me. Take care. Bye-bye.